Okay, so we're continuing to talk about trigonometric functions. Today we're going to talk about inverse trig functions and something called solving right triangles. Um, in Algebra 1, you learned that inverse functions or inverse operations are functions or operations that undo each other. Okay, what you're used to, and this is how we solve equations. You find the operations that cancel each other out or undo each other. Okay, sorry, the table was a little wobbly. Okay, so example of, examples of functions that undo each other would be addition undoes subtraction, multiplication undoes division, okay? Taking the square root undoes something being squared. Okay, those are all examples of inverse functions or, or inverse um, operations. They cancel each other out, okay? So an inverse trigonometric ratio is used to find the measure of an angle in a right triangle. So we use the cosine of the angle, the tangent of the angle, the sine of the angle to find the length of a missing side. We put that into an equation to find what the missing side was, okay. Now, we are going to use the same information, but we're going to use it to find the missing angle, okay. It's going to be still using your calculator, but it's going to be using a different button on it, so I'll have to show you what that is. And, again, I don't have an, a TI-84 with me, but I can show you using my computer app. I'll have to use, I'll have to do that in a separate video. I could try to use the iPad again, but again, I'll have to do the calculator in a separate video like I did before. Okay, so for example, when I had sine of 72 equals x over 10, the variable was here. I was trying to find the length of a missing side. Okay, now it might say the sine of angle A equals 5 over 10. The angle I'm trying to find the sine of is angle A. That's where the variable is in these problems. It is not part of the proportion like it was before. Okay, so the variable is here. We call this the argument of the trig function. Okay, it's the angle you're trying to take the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of the argument. Okay, so we have inverse trigonometric ratios. Okay, so let angle A here be an acute angle in a triangle. Again, this has to be a right triangle. It won't work. Okay. Um, and we have a notation here. Something, it looks like that. It looks like something to the negative one power. It is not an exponent of negative one. It means something inverse. So if we see that, it means sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse. Okay. And I'll show you what it means. Okay. So if I have the inverse sine function, I know if I have the sine of A, equals x, again, I'm trying to find the angle here, I know what it equals, it equals some number, then the measure of angle A equals the inverse sine of x. That's how you, it, that's how you say this, inverse sine. You don't say it's sine to the negative 1, okay, it's inverse sine. Or I can say measure of angle A equals the inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse, because we're still using SOHCAHTOA here, okay. If cosine A equals Y, again, I'm trying to get A by itself, then the measure of angle A would equal the inverse cosine of that, which is the inverse cosine of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay. If I'm trying to find this, then the measure of angle A equals the inverse tan of that value. Okay. So the measure of angle A equals the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, because we're still using SOHCAHTOA here, okay? So it's just a different notation. It means we're finding what the angle is, okay? We're basically, what we're doing is we're using that chart backwards, okay? The chart in your textbook, and I'll show you this in a minute, okay? Um, 
we're saying what angle corresponds with a certain trig ratio. Okay. So, for example, this says find the measure of angle A in each problem below. Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a degree. So one decimal place. Okay, so it says the sine of angle A equals three fifths. What does this actually mean? Okay, it means here's a triangle. Down here is angle A. The opposite side from that is three, and the hypotenuse is five. Now, we're not finding the missing side. I know right away I could use the Pythagorean theorem for that. I would get four. Okay, I want to know. How many degrees is this angle? That's what I'm looking for. What angle is that? So this is where we use, um, like I said, an inverse trig function. Let me show you on the chart first. I think it makes a little more sense to do this if you understand what we're trying to do here. Okay. So um, if I wanted to do this on the chart, 3 fifths is 0.6. Okay. So remember that chart that we had. Um, I don't know, page T7, so to find where T7 is. So to use the chart backwards here, I know I know the sine of the angle is 0.6, so I would look up and down the sine column for the thing that was the closest to 0.6. Here it is. Up and, look up and down the sine column for the angle that's the closest to 0.6. Okay, so here I'm looking down the sine column. It's the first column here, 0.6. It looks like it's somewhere between... 36 and 37. So if you're using the chart, you can only really round to the nearest whole number, okay? So it's probably about 37 degrees because 0.6018 is the closest to 0.6000, okay? So I know this is about 37 degrees. So the measure of angle A is about 37 degrees. I don't want to be more exact, but that's why I'm going to use a calculator, okay? So I'm actually finding this, the measure of angle A equals the inverse sine of three-fifths, okay? So um, if you're using your phone calculator or your iPad calculator, what you want to do first is change this into a decimal, okay? So again, to do that, let me go to the calculator here. Um, where, there it is. So you want to first change the fraction into a decimal. So I'd want to do... Um, 3 divided by 5 and hit enter, okay, and get that as a decimal first, so 3 divided by 5, enter, okay, so it's 0.6, so I'm going to use 0.6 in this problem, okay, so I need to use, do the inverse sine of 0.6, so I'm going to type in 0 0.6, and right here is inverse sine, I just press that, okay, and then right away it tells me the angle is 36.8 degrees. Okay, so the measure of angle A is equal to 36 point, I guess we go down to 36.9, okay? If you're using your, your phone calculator, you'll have to turn it sideways again. You might have to press the shift button. I know I have to press shift on my, on my Android here if I turn it sideways, okay? I have to press, oh, and my, and my phone is inverse here, okay? But yours probably says shift, or maybe it has a little arrow, but I would, this one is, I could just do 3 divided by 5. And hit enter, and it gives me the same answer. Okay, your calculator would work the same way. You would have to press second sign, type in the fraction, close the parentheses, and then hit enter. It'll give you the answer. And again, I'll make a separate video showing you how to do that on the TI-84. I have to use that on my computer though. Okay, so that's kind of what we do. So how do we do these? Okay, cosine of a is 0 0.15. I type in 0 0.15 inverse cosine. I get that angle a inverse cosine of 0 0.15, it's about 81.4 degrees, okay? 0.1614, inverse tan of that. Angle A is about, measure of angle A is about 49.3 degrees. And here, if you're doing that, if you're using your, your phone calculator, again, you'll want to type in, that one's a little tricky to do. So we're going to press 3, then the square root button, then divided by two and hit enter, and then hit inverse sine. So it gives you 60. So that's an actual, that's actually something called a special right triangle. It's exactly 60. 
that one you don't need to put a decimal point away from integer. We skipped that section, chapter 7.4. We'll come back to that. It's just it's a better section to explain in person rather than you know by yourself here. Okay. So these work the same way. I want to find the measure of angle A. So again, I look at what I'm given. I'm given the opposite side. I'm given the adjacent side. So opposite over adjacent would be tangent, I hope you all just said. So again, normally I write tangent of the angle here. I don't know what the angle is. So it's tangent of angle A equals the opposite side, which is 20, over the adjacent side, which is 15. Okay. So take 20 over 15, turn that into a decimal, or go use your calculator however you want to do it. I believe that it is 1.3333. Okay. So take inverse tan of 1.3333, you get angle, measure of angle A equals 53.1 degrees. Okay, again, here if I'm finding angle A, I have the adjacent side, I have the hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. Cosine of angle A would be 10 over 26. So I would find what that is as a decimal, do the inverse cosine of that, and I end up with 67.4 degrees, okay? If you want to hit pause and try these yourself, actually in number seven, you have a choice. You can use any of them, sine, cosine, or tangent, because you have all three sides here. It doesn't matter which one, but from angle A, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. Doesn't matter. I'll just, which one did I use? I didn't use sine, so we'll use sine. So sine of angle A is the opposite side, which is 24, over the hypotenuse, which is 51. Um, 24 divided by 51, and then I do the inverse sine of that, I get 28.07 degrees, which we'll call 28.1, okay? And then here again, tricky, I probably picked the one with the least square roots in it, so it'll probably be the easiest to do opposite and adjacent here. So tan A is 7 over the square root of 5, so I'd have to type on my phone 7 divided by 5, hit the square root sign, then hit enter, and then hit inverse tan. So a measure of angle A is 72.3 degrees. Okay. Again, this is really the easiest to do using your graphing calculator or a scientific calculator, and that video will be coming shortly. Okay. So your homework for that is worksheet 7.7a.